Welcome back to the channel. Today, another rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis of V for Vendetta. I'm a massive fan of the character V, not just because he wears a mask in front of other people, but it's kind of my favorite graphic novel and my favorite film, so it's gonna be a real pleasure breaking this one down. Be warned though, it does contain lots of nasty injuries. It's worth mentioning as well, the fight scene kicks off with V sustaining multiple gunshot wounds. We'll talk about this briefly at the end, but let's see how he thanks the gunman. Three, two, one, fight. This is freaking not good. I'm probably gonna be saying that a lot in this video. Both these guys sustain deep penetrating injuries to the chest, and as there are lots of delicate structures in the chest cavity, this type of injury has a very high mortality of around 50%. This square area below your collarbones and above the tiny bit of cartilage at the end of your sternum and extending out to the nipples is called the cardiac box, and it reminds us that we have to suspect injury to the heart. If the knife goes straight through the heart here, this would cause a ventricular rupture. You're pretty much gonna be dead if that happens. Any bleeding around the heart may build up inside the heart's protective jacket and then end up compressing the heart, stopping it from filling and beating properly. This is called a cardiac tamponade and can also easily be fatal unless emergency surgery performed. First two down and already not looking good. Looks like here we have a bilateral penetrating trauma to the anterior chest, so through the skin and soft tissue and through the pectoralis muscles. The blood splatter we see here is most likely from laceration to the subclavian artery and vein, so called because it passes under the collarbone and also goes on top of the first rib. Just one of these arteries ruptured could cause enough blood loss to kill you, so both of them ruptured, not looking like a good outcome. I'm assuming also that the ribs have protected the lungs here, but you wouldn't be sure, so whilst controlling the bleeding, you wanna make sure you do a thorough chest exam and imaging. Having said all that, I don't see any reason why this chap would suddenly lose consciousness. Blood loss would obviously do that, but that wouldn't be instant. Deep laceration here across the neck with an obvious vascular injury. So you'd be thinking about the layers that have been damaged from this knife injury. So it would have gone through the skin and soft tissues, through the very thin platysma muscle, you know, the one you see if you do that movement. Then underneath this, some really important structures. So the external jugular vein, the sternocleido muscle, and then directly under that would be the carotid sheath, the channel that contains the internal jugular vein and the carotid arteries. They're the arteries you feel uh, when you take the pulse in the neck. I'm assuming we're seeing a complete transection of all these blood vessels, and maybe even damage to the windpipe too, so I'm not surprised that this chap loses consciousness quickly due to loss of blood flow to the brain, probably never to wake up again unless he has an urgent surgical repair, which <laughs> I just don't think is possible in a London sewer. What appears to be penetrating trauma to the lower abdomen, again, injury to blood vessels is most likely to be fatal the quickest. For example, rupture to the descending aorta or any of the iliac vessels that come off of it. There's also the inferior vena cava, the big vein on the right-hand side of the body that takes all the blood from the lower half of the body back to the heart. It's more than possible that all of these blood vessels are missed because actually they're towards the back of the abdomen really. But this chap still wouldn't be out of the woods because you can actually injure the bowel. This can be fatal both from bleeding but also if it becomes ripped open and what we call a perforation. Although this normally takes several hours to kill someone from an overwhelming infection. If that wasn't enough, we see a very dangerous mechanism of injury to the neck, a fall from height causing a lateral flexion motion on impact. Could easily be dealing with a cervical spine fracture. The worry about this would be if it then damages the spinal cord, which could lead to paralysis. Penetrate an injury to the right anterior chest wall, similar to what we saw before. Again, his ribs and sternum have hopefully done a good job of protecting his lungs, but we couldn't guarantee that, so we'd have to do careful examination and imaging. 
Then we have deep penetrating injury to the left anterior chest wall. Very similar to the first injuries we saw, but this is outside of the cardiac box. 100% looking at an open pneumothorax, so air getting into that thoracic cavity from the environment. And you'd also be expecting bleeding from the subclavian artery and vein, causing a hemothorax. Foreign objects like this knife that are impaled are best secured in place so they don't cause further damage and only removed in theatre. I saw an injury very similar to this just last week and the chap made a good recovery. Oh, penetrating abdominal trauma to the umbilical region. The amount of blood we see here, you'd be expecting ruptured to the aorta, which would lead to fatal blood loss in just a couple of minutes. Another penetrating neck trauma with an obvious vascular injury. We then see three very similar slashes of penetrated trauma. The last one has the most ridiculous blood splatter pattern. Going this superficial, there aren't really any blood vessels to kind of burst open like this unless he literally goes through the ribs and slashes the heart open, which I'm guessing is possible. And then we have right posterior forearm penetrating trauma. So there'd be damage to the wrist and finger extensors, so the muscles and tendons. You would get some bleeding though, particularly if you damage the houseman's friends, the big vein there. Right medial thigh penetrating trauma, clearly injury to the groin muscles. But this is very close to the area of the femoral artery and vein, the main blood vessels to the lower limb, which if ruptured would cause significant hemorrhage, which could easily be fatal especially because he then has a penetrating injury to the cardiac box. Goes without saying, but multiple injuries in trauma massively compound the risk of death. Penetrating injury to the frontal bone. This would be considered an open fracture, but probably that's the least of the concern as this knife would have breached the brain's protective membranes and extended probably around five centimeters into the frontal lobe of the brain. Although there is a chance that this may have squeezed between the two hemispheres of the brain. I'm sure many of you watching will think this guy is definitely dead, but I think he's more likely to survive if we can get him stabilized and urgently transferred to an emergency neurosurgical unit. As well as stabilizing him, he needs careful assessment, including his consciousness using the Glasgow Coma Scale and look for any neurological deficit. That's any signs of brain dysfunction. Worrying short-term complications would be bleed Bleeding, bruising to the brain and seizures. Later complications would include infection. And finally, in this epic scene, V fulfills his promise to Mr. Creedy by snapping his cervical spine and severing his spinal cord. I've talked about this in previous videos, but if you damage the spinal cord above the level of C5, so the fifth vertebrate in the neck, you can be killed pretty much instantly. Firstly, you would be instantly paralyzed, as we see here, Mr. Creedy's legs stop moving but then you'd suffocate as there'd be no messages going to your diaphragm, so the main muscle of breathing. So Mr. Creedy is probably aware of his last few moments of life, but it's just unable to breathe. So there you have it, my breakdown of this fantastic scene. We can't also forget that V had multiple gunshot wounds akin to a kind of firing squad, but somehow manages to survive long enough to perform his fancy karate gimmicks. We have to suspend our disbelief a bit because in reality, he would be dead. But if there's one thing I've learned in medicine is that it's full of surprises. So in this instance, I'm gonna side with V because ideas are bulletproof. And so in summary, my best guess at a kind of kill count would be none of them stable, two in serious condition, nine in critical condition, and three dead at the scene. 
So I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support that you continue to give me on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it and subscribe as well and leave a comment if there's any other fight scenes you want me to look at. Always remember, don't turn on your notifications. Just drop in whenever you fancy some medicine in simple terms and I'm sure there'll be a video for you. If you want to support the channel, I've got a fun way of doing it. I've brought out some face coverings in various different colors. These are not medical masks, they are just face coverings, but they have all the cells of the immune system, so everything that we need to keep us safe. So go check them out. On that note, I hope you're all well, and I'll be back soon.